the last piece of the puzzle that we need to add is the original logo back in. So I'm gonna select it and hit Shift H. And I want to add a new shader to that. So I'm gonna play forward so we can get to part of the reveal of it. So we can see it beneath. And I wanna also animate on the transparency of it so that we're not um, so that we're not seeing it the whole time because there is a little bit of a distance between each of these cubes. I don't want to be us to be able to see it behind it. So we'll animate the transparency on first. We need to add a new shader. So let's go to assign new material and then do surface shader standard surface. And then let's choose that same teal color that we've been using and let's turn up the transmission and I want to turn on that color as well for that. And what that does, we can see in the render, it kind of make, it, it will kind of give it like a, a frosted glass look. Um, let's turn that up. And I also want to check the alpha channel here. Yeah, so it's going, so we can't see through it, which is a, a thing to keep in mind right now. Let's go to opaque. Let's make this opaque by selecting it and choosing um, the unchecking opaque. And I th think that might help. No, it doesn't help the alpha channel. I think that's part of the tra the transparency, not the emission. So just keep that in mind. Even though it looks kind of transparent, the alpha doesn't respect that. Meaning, you know, if you bring that into After Effects or something, it's not actually going to look transparent. So let's go to the back over to the shader of this. And let's go down to the geometry tab. And you could adjust the opacity here. So like I said, we wanna animate this. So now if I go to the alpha channel, yeah, you can start to see through it here. It's not totally white. And we can just crank that even down down even further. So I'm gonna turn that back to RGB. Um, and what I want to do is also turn on emission with that color. Cool. And let's turn off the uh, specular. I don't want any specular on this. So one of the last things we need to do is animate the transparency of the shader so that it will, we don't, we, we don't want to see it here, right? So we need to animate the transparency of it. So let's animate it on. So around, it should be on by frame 170. So let's go down to the trans opacity under uh, geometry and let's just set a key here and then let's go forward maybe 20 frames and set a key for it to be black. And let's preview that because what we don't want to have happen is to see the geometry through these little gaps of the cubes until we're ready for it. So. I'm just going to scrub forward, even though it's probably going to spaz out. See, now you can start to see that teal pop through the edges here. It's very subtle, but by the time all of this starts falling, it will be ready to be revealed, which is kind of cool. And you know what? The th one thing I might do is I do think I want to turn on the... Um, because what I'm reacting to right now is the fact that it's easier to see the teal through the purple than it is like teal on teal. I like that the teal kind of triggers the reveal. Um, but what I, what I am reacting to is I want, I don't want the, the, I don't want this purple. Uh, I, I don't want this teal to take up the whole thing. So I just want to turn on and add fade mode to five on that. 0 0.05, let's do that. And let's do 0 0.05 here. And to, just for time's sake, I'm going to decrease the render resolution here to like 10%, something tiny. And I want to see if it'll playback at all. 
That's a crazy color. I hope that's not what the color is. Let me <laughs> let me turn the test resolution back up. Yeah, I don't I don't like that at all. What's going on there? I think that's from the this is the, the fun part of rendering and why 3D can get really time consuming. It's the emission rate here is probably too high. If we crank the emission down of the pixels. Yeah, now it's just totally black. Let's just barely leave that on. If we crank it all the way up. Yeah, it's just too it's just too much. I'm gonna delete this color correct and just pipe pipe it into itself. Yeah, because I just like the accuracy of that color a little bit more. And then we can just dial down the amount of emission that's going on. Just want to be able to see a little bit inside of here, but not all the way. So anyway, that was just a, a yeah, a little detour there for a second. So let's get the resolution back down to 10%. Let's play this, see if it won't update it easy enough so again what I, what I just did is I reduced it to 10% because I want to play this back because now that's the only way that we can see these color changes when I um, adjusted it so that instead of being permanently added the teal to as it goes around it'll fade off so I need to see it actually render now because we've set up all the shaders and stuff I want to see the rate at which it um, and it's probably super tiny on your screen. I'm just going to zoom in here then. Yeah, it's already fading out at a pretty good rate. Because what I want to see is I want to see purple on teal for this reveal of the logo. And I kind of like that. Yeah, because I, I want to keep some purple here. Other, I don't want it to go like all teal, then you can't really see what's happening. Cool. And these will just go through the object. Let me hit escape real quick. And we should be able to see this. Let me bump up the resolution back to 100. And we should be able to see these pieces inside of the logo a little bit. And what I'm going to do in After Effects is just fade this to the solid color um, of a 2D image of the logo. But it's kind of cool. You can see these are inside of it. So now that we have our render kind of in a good spot, let's render this thing out. And I will show you how to bring this into After Effects as well very quickly. But I think for the most part it's working. The only thing, you know what I'm worried about now is this big of a highlight. It's gonna really ping as it's falling down and rotating. So I don't want that to be that big of a highlight. So I'm gonna reduce the specularity of this real quick. Yeah, it's still at one. Let's just crank that down. It's just too much going on. Maybe crank up roughness just a little bit more yeah, because I just didn't want that super bright white area that we see as as cubes are falling and tumbling and pinging reflections that get really distracting, I think. So we'll just reduce that a little bit. And now we have our kind of animations done. We've set the camera. We got the shaders all set up nicely. What we need to figure out is when do we want to start rendering this thing? Let's select our camera and see when our first keyframe is for that. We can't see it because it's locked, but if we look in the graph editor, we can see it is frame 48. So let's just scrub forward. I think that's a fair spot. Maybe f let's start on frame 50. It's always easier to, to delete frames than it is to re-render the whole thing. So let's start on frame 50. Maybe 48. You know what? I You know what I want to do is I want to start this sooner. And I want to have it moving through more before all the animation gets started. Yeah, that's what I want. Cool. 
So let's start frame 36. And then let's just render this frame to make sure the transparency is working. Because I don't remember, we don't want to see the logo before it gets revealed to us. So just double check that in the render. Indeed, it's it's not there. It's totally transparent. If we look at the alpha channel, it's totally not there. And so now what we have left to do, we can add some AOVs. If you want to do some advanced compositing, you can add AOVs in the uh, render settings. So let's go over to AOVs. And first, let's let's merge, make sure that AOVs are merged. So we do that up here at the top under File Output, Merge AOVs. So when we s create them, uh, meaning like Z depth, we definitely want. We, let's do a mission. Well, I guess everything's emitting, so that might not help us that much. Let's do diffuse. Let's do. Um, I encourage you to to look a little more into the crypto mat. That's a topic for a whole nother whole course. Um, but basically you get to pick and choose what AOVs you want to include. And so now that we have those selected, they will be added to our render. So if I do a quick render preview here, now you can see those different ones added. So we can look at diffuse, we can look at emission, we can look at transmission, which I think the the main logo is the only one that has transmission. And then we have Z, but if we adjust the exposure of this, we can see there's actually information there. And then we have our beauty. So anyway, that's just for those people who know more about compositing, that's not what this course is about, but you can add AOVs there, and then you can have that in your compositing software to mess around with. So we want to make sure we have EXRs and let's call this DCS logo and we want name.number.extension and we want to start at 36 I believe I said and then this goes until um, probably yeah I'll probably go the whole way let's do 10, uh, 250 and then that's pretty much it. You can see where it's going to save it up here. If you set your project under File, Set Project, it will save it in the correct location, which for me is under Project My Images. And I'm going to render out at 720. I think that's going to be enough. The, the only other thing that we didn't really touch on yet is the Arnold render settings. So let's open this back up super quick. And We'll be able to see that, uh, you know, some of the shadows and stuff are, are noisy. And how to get around that is just increasing the settings here under Arnold Render. And we can increase the fuse to maybe three and camera to maybe four. And let's increase transmission because we do have that on the main logo. So that should improve the render quality quite a bit. And just see if that helps a little bit more. Yeah, let's just leave that at three. We'll put camera at five. Camera multiplies all of the ones beneath it. So that's kind of the main one and these control each uh, a value separate from that. So that's the only other thing to consider when we're starting a render. Now let's close this out and start a render from the render settings. Let's make sure that's all, all done. DCS logo. I just always love to double check this stuff because it can go, this is where it can go wrong. And I'm going to save before I do anything else in case it crashes right as I hit render. I can just open it back up and be ready. So now we can go over to uh, the rendering tab and choose render. And we want to choose the render sequence settings. If you choose batch render, you most likely will have a watermark on your render. But if you choose render sequence, that won't happen. Um, we wanna make sure it's current camera and it'll take all the settings that we've already set. You can see it has the right frame range here. And let's render sequence and close. And now it'll pop open a window and it'll start our render. Thanks for watching.